The Bitcoin Group, the American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. We'd like to welcome our panelists, Ben Ark from LN Bits, Bits. Josh Shigala from the standard.io. Hey everybody, welcome from live from Mallorca blockchain days. Dan Eve, the crypto raptor. Hola amigos. And I'm Thomas Hunt from the World Crypto Network. Moving on to issue one. Issue one, Bitcoin, Coinbase stock, and Ripple soar as the Ripple ruling bolsters crypto optimism. Cryptocurrencies across the board rallied along with stocks as a federal judge ruled that Ripple's sale of tokens on exchanges and through algorithms did not violate federal security laws. Bitcoin prices broke through 31,000, Ethereum through 2,000, Ripple went up 80%, and Stellar went up 50%. Ben Ark, is the bear market over? And more importantly, do Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other cryptocurrencies not have to worry about being called securities anymore? I mean, I don't think Bitcoin is ever going to be called a security, but I think it's the the reaction of all the markets seeing a light to touch when it comes to, comes to regulation and set some legal precedent on some of these more scammy sort of tokens, which could be considered securities. I think that's then good news just for Bitcoin. Um, and absolutely, like, Bitcoin has, like, quadrupled in price easily in very short periods of time. Um, and uh, we're still, there's still nowhere near as much interest in Bitcoin as there should be. Um, so yeah, we're, I think I think it started. I think and now I do think we are going to get that in okay easily because um, it's just not that far to go. Because the, the, the trading market is so illiquid. Um So yeah, it's, yeah, we're totally you know in the bull market, and yeah, it's all good. It is amazing how fast it happens, how fast things turn around. Josh Agala, Ripple was quickly re-added to Kraken, Coinbase, other websites. What do you think about suddenly Ripple? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big Ripple fan, never have been. It's one of the oldest coins uh, next to Bitcoin. Uh, I think it came out even just uh, before Litecoin. Even. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember. It was a long time ago. But yeah, I mean, they've been around for ages. I, I honestly don't see, I, I'm not interested in what technology banks use in their back end. I couldn't give a school rat's fat. So, you know, I wish them all the best. Good luck. I think it's great. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that there's some clarity uh, in the market, and uh, I think it'll give the, the market a definite boost. Uh, it'd be interesting what I think Ethereum but we need to, need to go ahead now uh, from the SEC, even though they've said in the past it's not now with the, uh, uh, with the proof of stake. Maybe it is, uh, again, a total ridiculous farce, human weird. From my point of view, it's like humans come along and go, oh, we're going to put a name on this and, you know, to build rules that don't make any sense. But let's see, let's see what happens. Uh, it has been amazing to see Ethereum transform themselves to proof of work, to proof of stake. And again, perhaps the way they rolled it out, getting the coins out there will make a stronger proof of stake system than we've seen before where they centralize quickly. They might centralize slowly. Dan, Eve, what do you think about Ripple? They used to call it the banker's cryptocurrency the one that wanted to be regulated, and the one that famously paid the SEC an enormous fine, which then gave them legitimacy, at least for a while. And what? now they're back again. It's like the long it's like the longest running ICO. That's the craziest thing, is it, it's the with all the sketchy ICOs that have been out there, and it's the longest running, and this aren't they still like raising funds? Like and and what's crazy about that is that when I used to go to like when I was finishing off uh, um, uh, my, my workplace, it was, it was a, a insurance and banking company. Um, I went to like the early blockchain conferences in London. And it was like Ripple is the banking product, and I'd be like, a Bitcoin, like talk to the Treasury Department, and they'd be going, "Yeah, but have you heard of Ripple? It's like it's the it's gonna it's gonna found it's the foundation of banking," and uh, I'd be like. It's, it's an ICO, like Bitcoin is di different, and and they kind of didn't understand. And it, it, the, the the whole like Ripple is the the, uh, the 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 new banking infrastructure has been prevalent for so long. What's what's cool about this is that not only because uh, like the the fact that it, it's kind of 
it's in the face of the SEC, right? So they've been really hard, right, really heavy with all the other cryptocurrencies, it Algo and, and all the other ones that they, they have been delisted recently. Um, but the fact that Ripple is like the worst example of an ICO, it really sets the stage for all the other terrible ICOs out there who can go like, yeah, but Ripple, you said wasn't a security. And whether that's a good or a bad thing or not, like the markets are pumping and that's good. And as much as Bitcoin is nothing to do with Ripple, people still associate Ripple with Bitcoin because of this whole crypto Bitcoin, you know, the, this analogy, not analogy, but this synergy. And so it's ultimately good for Bitcoin because Bitcoin will always prevail. Whatever ICOs are out there, Bitcoin's going to prevail. If, if a judgment goes in the, in the, in the name of, of, of an ICO, it's still going to make Bitcoin look good. And it's going to make Bitcoin look even better because Bitcoin wasn't an ICO. It was a fair launch, as we all know. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a bad decision in a way, but a good decision for Bitcoin. It has been interesting to watch as Ethereum and Ripple pretty obviously raised money in front of everyone and then said that they didn't raise money. Moving on to the exit question. Exit question. Will the price of Bitcoin be higher or lower this time next week? Ben Ark. I don't know, I think it's started. Josh Shigala. Yeah, probably higher. Although it's already lost all the gains it made yesterday. So. <laughs> Dan Eve. Bitcoin, muchos grande. True buku. And now, unfortunately, I left the magic eight ball upstairs in the hotel room. So we'll pretend there's an eight ball. Will the price of Bitcoin be higher this time next week? Got to shake it for bubbles. It says, yes, the price will be higher. Yes, the ball has spoken. Moving on to issue two. Alleged crypto cooks, crook, Sam Bankman Freed, asks Judge to allow his close friends to visit. Sam Bankman Freed, the leader of FTX, robbed hundreds, maybe thousands of people of their life savings, and now... He'd like to have his friends over to his parents' house where he hangs out with his dog and plays video games. Josh Shigala, SBF is still not in jail. The trial hasn't begun. And the judge, they would like his friends to visit. Do you think he should? I, I, this guy, you know, the SEC go around taking everyone down and, and, and doing all this sort of thing. And then here's someone that's literally stolen life savings from thousands and thousands of people that really cause suffering and it's very easy to see that what why isn't this going to trial straight away and uh and making you know i mean i i don't like making an example i want a fair trial for the guy but still like what why isn't this being done what what's what's with him being at home and being able to play video games i mean it, it's like their state is treating him like a child you get in your room and you play video games by yourself I mean, he probably plays online games. Um, I'm not sure, but it, so he's seeing his friends anyway. Uh, it just seems very strange, very strange. Too too many uh, too many handoffs back in the day. It is interesting. If you hurt a person, you generally go to jail for it. But if you steal <laughs> money from thousands of people, they let you stay at your house. Well, it's like if you murder someone, you go to prison. But if you murder 10,000 people, you get a one more, you know, good business class ticket to the high. To the high. It's a very strange legal environment. Even this week, we've seen people posit that if you're running for president, you can't be accused of a crime or have a trial against you because you're busy running for president. Obviously, Sam Bankman Freed should run for president. Dan Eve, what do you think about Sam's request? He just wants to have his friends over for a sleepover. Come on, mom. If I was, if like back in the day, if I was grounded, and I was like, but come on, can Normski come over and just hang out? They'd be like, what's the point of the punishment? No, like I wouldn't have this like, oh, this 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 kid gloves thing. And we've seen this like, we've seen this heard about this all along. That he used to he was doing interviews, right? So he was just like flapping around. He was talking to all sorts of people. He was doing like he was almost like made more of a celebrity after he became a you know obviously innocent before proven guilty uh, but when you literally on a podcast or like it being interviewed go 
yeah, like co-mingled funds. Oh, 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 oh. You know, like the, the, you, you know, you've got to admit to the crime there. Like there, there's there should be less of the kid gloves and more of the the realistic. He's just admit to a crime. It's like going if someone's accused of something, um, and we're going to still interview them. Um, uh, you know, because they they are still innocent until proven guilty. But if on a previous interview they went, yeah, I definitely murdered the guy, you'd be like, oh, we better not interview him because he's fucking crazy. And uh, or not, you know, he's maybe sorry. Yeah, but um, that, it just seems like you know he's paid too many people out. Like whether it's uh, both sides of the political spectrum, he's done a lot of donations. And if you're a clever guy in that position, you're going to be throwing money everywhere because whoever's in power, you want to re- you want to know that you're not going to be prosecuted. You're going to have all the nice treatment. You'll have all the the, the niceties of staying at home playing. Like imagine if you're like if you're a kid, and he seems like quite a kind of he's obviously very intelligent. But you're a young guy at heart. He probably wants to sit there and what and play like World of Warcraft all, all day long, whatever. And they're like, your punishment is staying in your room and playing on the internet. You're like, yes. So it's not really a punishment, but ultimately the courts are going to decide. I, 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 I mean, he's obviously the mixture between a philanthropist and a sociopath. So that would be a philanthropist. Philanthropist. There you go. But he's. Uh, yeah, I, I can't see him not doing jail time, but unfortunately, in in today's climate, I I can see him like not doing jail time. I think he's I think he's going to get away with it. It'll be some sort of plea deal. Someone else to go down. The legal team will blame it on them, saying every decision was actually down to them. I ran the commingling of funds. Yeah, I ran it by the lawyer, and so the lawyer is actually going to go down for it, not me. Ben Ark, what do you think? He just wants to have his friends over. I think it's just another example of the emperor using his clothes and it being obvious that the the uh, legal inequalities in which you have in America. He's just he's from an old money family. Uh, he's one of the boys. They're going to look after him. Nepotism. Yeah, it's just it's just the nepotism. It's the nepotism which got him to the place where he was in the first place. Um, and uh, the usual pattern of behaviour is that for as long as they can, they will keep him under their wing and protect him with all with all the power. Um, if there's enough public court of opinion who says oh no he's a bad guy then you know you've, you've seen it with other people who've been protected by um, uh, the, 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 the inner powers of, uh, of someone like the US uh, that it will turn on them and turn on him as well and he made, made a, an example of so you know it's it's um it's just it's just another example you just have to imagine all those poor kids who just get chucked in jail and uh, in the US for right. very minor crimes and this affecting few people as well. Yeah, exactly. Like affecting many many people. Yeah, but the people which the Sam Bowman freak effect that like yeah. he should be locked up straight away. I mean if if you're playing by the same rules, but yeah, it's just an example of uh, inequality and uh, yeah, they say nepotism or shit. But I, I just want to add, like a lot a lot of people want blood and I understand that. But at the same time, being on the cyberpunk side of things, I, I blame really the fact that the the regulators are punishing these, uh, you know, other coins where, where we're building technology to have decentralized exchanges. Mm-hmm. And the the whole point is to decentralize as much. But yeah, there's no perfect thing. Like, yeah, some, you can definitely argue that the Ethereum's not, not decentralized enough. And But there's this technology which we have now where we have these liquidity pools and we don't need these central authorities to hold vast amounts of honeypot. And, and screw up the business, and whether it's on purpose or by accident, um, or have some sort of corruption like Sam Bankman Fried had, uh, allegedly. It's, it's really the fault is the community's been using this nonsense over and over and over again. And it, it doesn't matter how many times people lose their money, the next exchange will come through and people will use it. So we, we need to build better technology. That's that's how you fix this. It's not by putting someone in jail and hanging them in, in, in front of, you know, a thousand people so everyone can watch him die and reel. Uh, it, it'll just happen again. It'll just happen again. It's not helping anyone. What helps people from not losing money is building decentralized exchanges. Full stop. It's a very good argument. We should use even more, but they could just say, you know, if you're building this, go like, you can just say, well, you know, we don't want to lose some bad feed experience. Yeah. We don't want people to lose money. That's why we're building this decentralized exchange. Yeah. And that's the idea. That'd be quite a nice way of putting it. 
think one benefit of decentralized exchanges that I, I think is a really cool idea is that the the idea that you could lock the LP tokens as well. Yeah. So like so the fact that you can you know fair enough anyone can build a like put an LP a, like a printing ball out there and say there's like a million dollars against you know so that, that will be traded but they can pull it at every second. The idea that you could lock it and the forever locks. You know, they're, they're still scam coins that have done it, but at the same time, it's still kind of better than an exchange, than an exchange where it's an invisible order book. You've got, like, I've watched it, like, you, you know, when you know, back in the early days, you'd see on certain exchanges and you'd be like, how are they doing a million dollars of volume where there's, like, not even, like, five five thousand dollars of volume? You know, at least you've got a, a completely transparent liquidity pool. When you lock the tokens in, you know that someone can't just come along one day, pull the quincy tokens and, and pull the, you know, pull the tether, pull the, uh, the, the Ethereum. And so it is a bit more transparent, but we need, I think we, we need more of that. We need less of the, and, and it also with the decentralized exchanges, it's encouraging people to hold their own coins. It's doing that whole principle of going, like, you're not, you're not sending your coins to an exchange where it's a black box, right? You're sending it to a smart contract, which you might not be able to read the smart contract, but there's other people that have reviewed it, audited it. There is obviously, if nothing's ever completely trustless, you've got to reply on, you've got to rely on the computer chip to know that it's not going to screw you in some way. But at least it's more trustless than a centralized exchange where Sam Bankman free walk around in a Nissan Micra. Okay. One, one thing I was thinking when you were giving your talk today here at my Yoko blockchain days, Ben, was you were, you were talking about um, your first, you know, decentralized marketplace on LN bids. I was thinking, you know, because Bitcoin can't build smart contracts like Ethereum, like in terms of the complexity of being able to have these these uh, liquidity pools and all that all that jazz. But couldn't you build another decentralized system that interfaces with Bitcoin? It's uh, it's, it's 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 funny that you're saying that because. Um... A couple of people have said, well, you could make local Bitcoins on that stuff. Yeah. I think it's a really interesting idea, particularly if you're doing like geolocation, if you're doing physical buys and stuff. Um, obviously, we need to sort the reputation thing out. I actually spoke with um, the founder of local Bitcoins, Jeremy, I spoke with him a couple of weeks ago about this. And the last thing I said to him was, can you make local Bitcoins on that star? And he was like, give it a try. Yeah. And that's so cool, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so I hope he does. <laughs> well, let's, let's move on to the exit question. Force prediction, yes or no, does Sam Bankman Freed get to see his friends, Josh Chagall? Um, yes. Dan E. Yeah, he's in the kickoffs. Ben Ark. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yes, we all agree Sam Bankman Freed will see his friends. Moving on to issue three Satoshi or not, here he comes. An incredibly long article in Forbes today written by Michael Del Castile posits that whether or not Craig Wright is or is not Satoshi Nakamoto may no longer be the point. The point is that now his company Enchain and Tulip Trust, among others, have acquired somewhere near the number of 4,000 software patents that Wright may use to attack not just Bitcoin and blockchain technology, but open source software in general. Dan, Eve, what do you think about the return of Craig Wright, alleged Satoshi, and his 4,000 patents? I've been to Enchain. I've met with two doctors that work for Enchain, and both of them said that people who work for Enchain know that he's bullshit. And I don't care about saying that because I was sat at the table opposite him when he said, Satoshi's probably dead anyway. And I know I've said that a few times, but the, like, what, what else can you go on? This guy's walking around the earth. He's got 4,000 patents. Yeah, he's a patent troll. Like, you know, he, he's been doing it right from the real early days and he's going to continue doing it. And unfortunately, patents, like, you, you've, you've got to have a huge, like, legal case to go and overturn a patent. That's, that's, like, that's a bad thing. Um, but it's going to happen. They'll, they'll be like, he's not going to hold all these, all these patents for long. He doesn't even understand the MIT license. Didn't he get an argument recently where he didn't even understand the MIT license properly? And I, I, I don't know. I think it's a, it's an abuse of power. And the fact is that you, as long as you don't run out of money, you can create a, a, a case against anyone, especially in the UK where libel laws are completely horse crap. 
Uh, they're still very ancient, so it's all on the person. There's a really good book by Ben Goldacre. He was actually sued by the, I think, the uh, one of the, um, I think it was, I remember it was, uh, anyway, really good book by, called Bad Medicine. But um, the fact is, libel laws, especially in the UK, are really bad. And I think Craig, Craig Wright's taking advantage of wherever he can, um, like uh, try and sue someone until they run out of money. But the, ultimately, the Bitcoin community's got more money because they kept their Bitcoin, whereas he sold it all for BSA. So they will win. We will win. Then, Ark, what do you think about Satoshi or not Satoshi's army of 4,000 patents? I think that the amount of money he has, um, and then all these patents, I think it's more that he's challenging free and open source licenses. But I actually don't think that free and open source licenses have been challenged probably enough. Um, so that's where the real danger is in the free and open source community is we, we lean, we tend to just trust that these licenses have been tried and tested um, in the legal course. Uh, and I think that it might not be the case. Um, and this is, this is where you could probably try and force damage. The reality is that those licenses just will have to be upheld because it would have such a, a damaging impact on, on the software industry. And, um, every time that Craig Wright's gone to court, um, and actually gone through the court process, he's just really made a fool of himself. And uh, it's, you know, it's embarrassing to read the transcripts. So if any of this stuff does eventually go to court, then he'll continue to do that. The man's got no shame. I mean, I don't know about due process, but... But did, even when he did... <laughs> Sorry, Jack. <laughs> Even when he won the case, right, again, did he win, kind of win the case again? No, he didn't. Format? No. But he won it, but he lost it, right? It was like no, a, lost it, it was like, you got one pound award, one pound of damages award. Oh, yeah, stupid yeah. Stupid, right? Yeah. So he won it, but they were like going, you literally talk out of your ass. Like, everything mm. you've done is fabricated. Like, so, so you, you kind of win this case on a de facto, like a, you know, technicality. Yeah, like technicality. That's why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, you're a type. Well, that's the thing, like... Uh... You know, it's it's gotten to the point where this guy is just a software troll, a uh, patent troll, and it's 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 really awful. It's just such a bad actor, bad actor in the space. And anyone that's really close to that community, they can at least see that he's just being a bad actor. And the trouble is, they're financially motivated to um, to basically lift him up because if he goes around suing everyone and not and allowing BSV to do it, they basically. I could, I mean, it's just proving that he's not Satoshi because it's just something that Satoshi wouldn't do. I, yeah, like everything yeah. that I knew yeah. of the guy, and I was around back then reading, reading the, the, the forums when he was still around, and it just, it's not his modus operandi or her or whatever. I, it, it was, you know, he, he yeah, it just it doesn't seem right. So this whole software trolling patent thing is just so disgusting and and really something that you know that, that was the whole battle when uh when the pirate party launched um and and napster was out there and spotify was trying to battle to get you know something legit with music this was the whole battle right uh, the whole patent troll and, and and people just trolling new softwares and trying to try to pull them out especially in specifically in the music industry at that point but um we we've we really need, I don't know, let, it's popcorn time. It's popcorn time. And Bitcoin will just keep on going. It doesn't matter. Well, we'll see. Craig Wright has a lot of lawyers and a lot of money. We'll have to see how the patent cases turn out. But it's an excellent article in Forbes. Very detailed. Although perhaps does give Wright, who is an alleged con man by a lot of people, allegedly, of course. It gives him a lot of credibility. And the article seems to believe a lot of the statements that Wright has made uh, at face value with no evidence or backing, such as his claims of 20 university degrees and so forth. So it is a little generous, perhaps, for Forbes. Moving on, uh, we'd like to thank everyone at Majorca Blockchain Days. We're there right now. We're on the island of Majorca, Hola. Mediterranean Sea. Shout out to Chris. Everybody that works so hard to make this conference possible, thanks for letting us use your stage in the middle of the night. Ooh. Moving on to issue four. The U.S. government is preparing to sell Silk Road Bitcoin again. Yes, the U.S. government has $300 million in Bitcoin, worth more now, 
and they intend to sell it because it's dirty Silk Road Bitcoin. Ben Ark, what do you think? Should the U.S. government sell this Bitcoin, or should they use it to build 50 Smithsonian museums, <laughs> one in every state? Yes, I think that'd be a good use of the money, but I mean, they should definitely sell it off slowly. Like, we just don't want them dumping the market with $200 million worth of it. I say that these days, I still want them to be, so the market will probably take it. Um, but yeah, they should probably not dollar cost average out. Can you do that? You can do that out slowly. slowly. Yeah, yeah, slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should probably do that. But if the price goes up, you're getting more and more every time you sell. Yeah, you can't uh, it. And it seems kind of ridiculous what you're doing, but yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, they, they should do this in some long ago. Um, but no, you know, congratulations, the US. Easy money. It does seem like they've been irresponsible with the previous amounts of Bitcoin that they've sold, allowing the profit to go to someone like Tim Draper instead of the American people or even the Smithsonian museums. Um, why does no one care, Josh? Why has the US government not been punished for selling these Bitcoin where it's worth 10 million and now it's worth 100 million? It was worth 20 million, now it's worth 200 million. I mean, why do they keep doing this? Because governments are full of shit. Like, if they actually wanted to punish drug marketplaces, they would at least use the funds that they thieved off of him to help victims of drug marketplaces or something mm -hmm. directly like that. Instead, they just keep it and dump it. And it's just totally ridiculous. The, the system is just, just stupid. I really see it so clearly like that. And uh, it's unfortunate. And it's the same with, same with the SEC. When the SEC takes down something, it's not like the victims of sort of like one coin get anything uh the victims of BitConnect. Yes. But, you know they, they just take a fine and then that well the fine goes to the state and whatever you know nothing really the victims are, are totally overlooked costs or whatever yeah dan eve what do you think about the government selling silk road bitcoin again so like when when draper bought it was wasn't it something it was still hyped like 40 million dollars of bitcoin in 2017 which uh, it was early 2017 so it was like three three thousand dollars it's now 30 percent so that's 400 billion now surely you'd think that they'd have learned their lesson but there's also the conspiracy right that uh, the cia invented bitcoin they sat with satoshi's million so they're like well, what's, you know, what, what's $300 million of Bitcoin? Because we already have a million Bitcoin, which is one in, one in 21, essentially, of the, 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 the final product. Um, obviously, it would be great if they built Smithsonian, if they, if they built museums are, around the world. But I think the governments are very short-sighted, aren't they? they? The people, you know, I'm not saying every government, but it kind of seems like many governments, they only see the short term value and they don't care about what's what's being passed on. And so although, um, you know, you always think about the, like, think about what, you know, what, I think my favorite my favorite uh, analogy about passing on to future generations is about um, what's the guy called uh, from uh, the Rolling Stones, the, the racist, no, not Jagger, the other guy, Keith Richards, Keith Richards, like like uh oh what's the it's like a it's a really funny meme it's like think about the world that we'll be leaving for keith richards sure. you know but like people don't think about the the the, the immediate future even like with their own kids they think about the profit they're making at the time we see that in governments all around the world and so they're making very short-term decisions and was it serbia that actually held bitcoin and were able to pay off national national debt was it, it was i think that they it? allegedly lost the bitcoin they acquired it from a criminal don't, don't trial you. And it was incredibly valuable, perhaps even more than the economy. Was it Bulgaria? Bulgaria? Yeah, and I think it might have been administratively lost. Oh, Some kind of boating accident. Lost. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, lost on a yacht. But it's, it is but very I, do, I do think Dan has nailed it here that the reason that the U.S. government would sell their Bitcoin is because they have so much more of it. And they don't care. The CIA reason, because obviously if you had tons of bitcoin you're selling 300 million you don't care it's nothing it's nothing and that's the only possible reason you could really explain their answers but even accident. 300 million is a drop in the ocean so what to, to what the national spending is in uh, what the national spending is in in um in america it's like you know it's really, it dwarfs in the uk and then any other government you know, it's, it's trillions right isn't it like isn't it over like 1.6 trillion that goes into the army in, in the military in, in the us alone 
in a, such a small amount, just hold on to it. Like it, it seems like it's it's this is a play on the future. Um, Bitcoin's been around for, for for 14, 13, 14 years now. Dan, Dan, they fucking print the money, man. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. They don't care. It's, they just make their own. Make their own. What is that you're totally right. Because they just thought we're going to sell. Okay, what about this? We're going to sell three hundred million dollars of Bitcoin. But tomorrow we'll print a trillion dollars exactly. and we'll buy off the dark market. We'll Whoa. buy six hundred million dollars. It really, Bitcoin. it really is. To a, a lot of money to a government of that size. It's more like a rounding error. Pretty, really pretty bad. funny. I still <laughs> think it's an act of war. Printing money has to be an act of war in general. Like you think about it, if we're all on a level playing field, right? And you're like, like you've got one of something, you've got one of something, you've got one of something, I've got one of something, but I can just make three of them. Like you'd be going, what? How can you just make three? That you know, you could just buy us all out. Like that's an act of war in terms of how you know, international negotiating about us. So I think it's really bad. The, the general, obviously, the money printing things horrendous, but hold on to the bitcoin just like you know let it pump the sec is obviously flailing against like the, the against ripple don't make the announcement now that you're going to sell a bunch of bitcoin hold it especially when ripple's pumping because bitcoin's going oh i guess them i guess them the problem is them holding it legitimizes it doesn't work oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they have to double it yeah because if they see it as an investment then it's an investment also i think there's pretty specific laws on how they treat uh stolen or uh, what's it called absorbed property oh my god and um you know if they take a yacht or they take a boat off a drug dealer they just sell it it's not a matter of that's a collector's yacht that's a great yacht yeah. that will go up in value it's more we're the government we don't oh, really yeah. own yachts okay, yeah. we don't really own bitcoin if it was gold or something else they'd sell it as well but they wouldn't do that with dollars right if they if they find the dollars they well, wouldn't they just put those in their the account but they could also print more dollars which is great well, let's move on to the last issue issue five the bitcoin family has a special algorithm that tracks moon cycles and it's helped them gain 50 percent since the bear market bottom We've talked many times about the Bitcoin family out of the Netherlands, famously sold their house and all of their possessions back when the price of Bitcoin was $300, which should give them enough money to not have to worry about anything. But somehow they keep writing these articles in CNN, CNBC about the Bitcoin family. I would have walked away years ago from this nonsense. Uh, Josh Shigala, what do you think about the latest claims that not only did the Bitcoin family allegedly buy early, hold till the top but now they're just casually jumping in and out of the market with their amazing ability to predict the price based on moon cycles it just is it's just a click clickbait headline it? it's a clickbait family i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's a beautiful story it's one of these stories that uh that it, it's it's a heartwarming one right family puts everything on the line Ooh, to, 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 oh, they did really well. Wow, what a wonderful family. You were unreal. Um, imagine if it went south like El Salvador. You know, it would just be, uh, this is reckless. You put your children's uh, schooling into jeopardy or whatever. Yeah, well, let's see. I, I, I hope it does well and uh, I've got to start looking at the moon. Well, they, they lived in a campground. They sacrificed everything. If you really think about it, haven't they already made enough? Do they really have to time the market? Do they really have to claim that they're timing the market? Uh, it seems a little absurd, and I wonder if perhaps they don't have the Bitcoin that they've claimed, and perhaps through their ridiculously complicated uh, cold storage procedures, which they've previously and unwisely described in the media, separating their keys to five locations and so forth, if they lost enough of those keys, they lost the money. And maybe that's why they're so good at gambling and timing the market. What do you think, Dan? He's using moon cycles and flowers and magic. It, uh, it just seems like recycled astrology because you, 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 there's certain events where you could kind of, you know, you, there's an event where if you acted quick enough, like when, when the SEC decision came out, if you went long on, on Ripple, then obviously you make money. But those events are so few and far in between that you know that it's and and usually it's more that bad news uh, 
really, the market's reacts faster than good news, right? You know, if if it's someone who has bad sales and you know they release their their their, their annual results, then uh, and you get there quick enough, you can make a put make a few bucks out of it dropping, and the market's going to drop more than if they had good results. Usually, you can see a fifty percent, but you you know doing a two hundred percent in the markets is is a lot more. But the I, the problem with with these predictive kind of you know oh we can sell these cycles is that and i tried to look at um what was the app it was like it was ta ta or uh, it's like a, it was like an app where you could buy algorithms and it would give you these these sorts of indicators but what what you'd see is that they would they would update them so if you took a screenshot and then update it to the latest version of that algorithm they would they they would pretend that they predicted the previous history better and but if you compare it to the screenshot, they fucking change the history. They change the history of their <laughs> predictions. So so that's, this is the problem. Here. And and whilst I really admire them, they're incredible. Like the, the fact that they took that huge risk. And I even said to like when, when I was when I was when I was being made redundant, I was like, if I uh, I was like, should I sell my house to my boss? I was like, and I was like, should I sell my house and uh, put it into Bitcoin? And this was when Bitcoin was like six hundred dollars. He was like. No, that's crazy talk. <laughs> Obviously, like you know, but even if I had and I'd done the, the dive that this family had done, there would have been a thing that I would have needed to sell my, my Bitcoin for and, and and I would end up, you know, using it as the money and, and this is the risk that people take. Uh, like a lot of people I've known when they go they dive into head first Bitcoin, like I'm I'm Bitcoin only, they forget about the day job and the income. And then they go, I'm going to rely on the Bitcoin. And when Bitcoin drops, they then have to sell the Bitcoin. And then they end up going through this bear market with the lower price Bitcoin and end up with nothing when at the outcome. And it kind of seems like, I hope it's not because they took such a dive. But it kind of seems like what they're doing is they sold all their Bitcoin off. And now they're going, what can we do? Oh, we know a load of contacts who interviewed us and we sold everything. We're going to try and pretend that we predicted the markets. I hope they get it right. I hope that they make no, everyone rich. They watch this show for the magic eight ball. They, they're like, okay. I, I think they're heading down the right path there, Dan. I think what they really want is a reality show. And they have no money and they want to be yeah. famous. Uh, because like you guys are saying, I root for these people too. They made a big investment. They were super early. They should be well off and relaxing. They shouldn't be trying to time the market. Yeah. Like you said, there's only a couple of big news events. And if you don't get on in the first 10 minutes, which means if you're on the internet 24 seven, looking for those big news events, that's not my idea of a vacation or a relaxing thing. All we kind of hear from these people is they move to the country with the lowest taxes or the no taxes, and they're avoiding things. I'd like to just to hear the story about the, the mother and the father sitting on the beach, reading books, the children going to wonderful universities and working in the fields that they choose to work in and having that freedom to choose that. That's a winning like this addiction to the market and you can predict it now. Like that's not really winning. That's just more stress. And I think they want a reality show. Ben Ark, what do you think about the Bitcoin family's ability to predict the market with moon cycles? And again, I think they should. I think, yeah, I think that's probably truth that they, they want the, um, uh, they click uh, that they want the likes and they're chasing the likes and they're not happy with their 15 minutes of fame they want 15 minutes of fame every six months i am however going to say completely the opposite stance when it comes to the moon once upon a time in a different life i worked in a, a, a care home for uh, kids with severe emotional difficulties and i was the house parent of about 12 kids on this particular unit whenever we had a full moon we would have extra members of staff because the kids would go fucking nuts. Humans, think about humans before this stuff, before light, right? Before synthetic lights. You're just sitting in the dark. It's you go to sleep. You wake up. All your time is spent at labour. When you have a full moon, humans like throughout hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years, when you have this rare occasion where you can stay up a little bit later and you can party, you can breathe, you can you know you can do all the fun things you can do at night. Um, uh humans behavior does change yeah on lunar cycles that's why it's called lunacy exactly yeah exactly because you were getting yeah. because of the, the lunatic yeah um so uh i i kind of taken the opposite point here and i think that it kind of makes sense to me that if you're gonna if you're gonna 
there's all these traders sat on their computers and then there's this inbuilt mechanism. Yeah. They see a full moon outside and they're like, maybe I'll just stay up a little bit later and maybe I'll be a little bit more reckless with my coins. Um, I think it'd be a hard thing to predict, but yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's probably good. I'm going to get to trade it and throw it through, uh, through chat GPT's code That's interpreter. Right. Yeah. yeah. Get through chat. Talk about chat very quickly. So I asked chat GPT the other day if it thinks Craig Wright is associated with it. Basically went, no. Got to sue him, Craig. Sue <laughs> the AI. There was a, early on with the AI stuff. Mm -hmm. this the, some of the big points of anything we could pay the lightning. He'd ask a question, pay like this is well before the chat GPT thing. Um, and they made this part of a hack day. And we were like, how oh, long can we ask him? We're like, oh, Who's Satoshi? So he said, to, Who is Satoshi? And because it was just scraping the internet, it went straight right to Satoshi. Yeah, we yeah. were like, oh. So I'm glad that the, the LML, LMM uh, AI to figure that out. It's more sensible. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just glad that one person on the panel stuck up and stood up for the moon cycle prediction. Surprised it was Ben, the yeah. most technical among us, next to be talking about astrology and I just I have, how it can also predict the price and jewels 12, 12 kids like all going nuts in the middle of the night you're like you're, you're, you're tired you're doing a night shift and then they, they will start beating each other up at three in the morning you have the police so it's hot it's, yeah and then, and then, and then somehow tired. somehow I find out what hey, the price is going to be and somebody gets a Ferrari well I definitely believe with my wife she's uh she goes bonkers around the moon so it's going to take the only thing is is it is it a self-fulfilling prophecy because like I so my mum was like uh apparently I I uh was diagnosed with ADHD like years ago my mum was like I didn't tell you I went to the doctors and they were like sounds like you've got ADHD when I was like 21 my mum was like I didn't tell you because I thought you'd act upon it. And then I went back to uni. I was like, oh, fucking ADHD, my phone. And I was doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So as soon as I found out about it, it was like the full moon. It was like, it's a full moon. I can be crazy. So is it like the, they, they kids, it's almost like the myth of the full moon. And they're like, it's a full moon. You know, it's crazy. I think if you just, if you just send yourself back to that era in human history, yeah. it makes sense. There's no light. Like, like, yeah. yeah. It's a party a bit like they didn't have they didn't have computers they didn't have anything so if you think about how they track the the star cycles and you think that's crazy how they notice these things but when all you do like in a day is go and find some food eat the food and that's it lie down and look up the sky you will tr you will notice every single star like you know you now you remember things like where do i store something on google what's in my phone we use all these different apps, but when back in the day they didn't they didn't have any of this stuff. So all they did was look at the stars and go, "Oh, they've changed in a slight way." You know, they, they had they were able to focus a hundred times more on certain Apart things. Apart from when there was a full moon, and then they would get They're like, in. "Oh my god!" <laughs> all right, I think we reached the end of the show. Sorry. Ready for predictions or story of the week? Uh, ben, Ark, go ahead with a prediction or a story of the week. Yeah, just being here, man. It's nice to hang out in the the, the real space with you lot, um, and uh, it's good to catch up with everyone in New York Bitcoin, um, New York Bitcoin days, New York blockchain, blockchain, days. blockchain days. That's it's the last. It's the last uh, trendy word. Uh, well, we, but anyway, the, the, the conference New York Blockchain Days. It's a fantastic conference, and they do an amazing job. It's very small, very intimate. Some real heavyweights, like who you don't usually see in Bitcoin. So the guy, the economist who coined the phrase quantitative easing, he was here doing the talk. And there's like, you know, a couple of dozen of us in the room. So it's nice to be able to hang out with those people and talk to them and pick their brains. Um, so, yeah, next year when you see this Milk Blockchain Days pop up, um, uh, we're always talking about it. And book a ticket. Milk is lovely, cheap flights to Milk. And uh, it's a it's a real high signal event, and uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Josh Shigalat. Yeah, I just have to back that up. It's been really great, and I look forward to the, the good thing about my yoga blockchain days is always a boat trip at the end, where you can bring your trezor, and uh, <laughs> no, no, but it's like uh, there's a boat trip at the end. All these people just hang out. We all hang out on this boat and head out and go swimming in little spots around the island. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. Chris does an amazing job putting this on. It, it really is speakers talking to speakers. So you're getting the, the high grade talks, um, and the, the latest sort of state of the union kind of things on, on some of the technology and the philosophy around Bitcoin and, and, and crypto as well. But um, 
yeah, a fantastic conference. Definitely recommend it. I'm going to go completely against the grain and say that there's something <laughs> real cool that's called New York of Blockchain Days. <laughs> that is, it's amazing. Like, and you go to some of these conferences and there's like a VIP area and you're like, oh, I really, really want to go and chat to yeah. one of the speakers. But they get whisked away like in this in this sort of like, you know, in this mist of people, there's an entourage and they, they, they just disappear. But here you can chat to people and you can find out just the most incredible things. And this is my favorite thing. Like, so, so Ben just talk earlier and it was like activating the, the lightning light using, using like lightning. And it's, it's just so cool. And you can go, you can chat to any speaker. It's, it's really personable. And yeah, you've got this huge conference. I haven't been to Miami, but I've been to things like Blockchain Europe, been to the, uh, what was that huge one in the blockchain week in, in New York. And everyone's got their like, you know, I tried to talk to our page and I was like, hey, and there's like a hundred people around him. You can't get to chat to. Yeah, it's but, bullshit, isn't it? And then you get all these tools that have come out of the woodwork in the last like year, yeah. like Mr. Wonderful, who they get treated like yeah. the ultimate yeah. Bitcoin, like, yeah. they're like, just go away with all these people. I just, well, I'm it, be was, back. it was funny. I did go to that Mr. Wonderful conference in Vegas and he walked down the center of the thing, pushed me right out of the way. And all these people were following him all. And you're right, he went from one speech to one speech to speech to the back VIP room and then he was gone. He was not drinking and eating with us at the rest of the conference. That's, but that is something which they, they like some conferences, they actively create that dynamic where they pull the speakers away, they have a special speaker. Yeah, and then they meal. sell they sell on it at the Miami yeah, conference. Yeah. You can buy a whale pass. 20 grand. Uh, yeah, 20 grand. I was going to say 10, but that's I can't first. go whale pass to some random dude in the corridor. It's hilarious. So I was like, hey, man, do a whale pass. But yeah, if you have the oh, whale oh, pass, really? Sorry, you get to hang out with the speakers. Uh, ben, why don't you tell them just a little bit about the lightning bolt and how it works, and then we're going to end the show. Yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, so we, we was, um, I just had a bunch of uh, spare electronics. So I did uh, like an ad hoc workshop where we made a uh, non-star signing device, Bitcoin hardware, wallet, um, uh, point of sale, and then point, uh, lightning point of sale, ATM thing. And then also this Bitcoin switch project. So I just picked up a couple of these cheap lightning bolts. They're like six quid, eight quid from Amazon. And I love them because they look like the yellow bits logo and they're, they're the same. Yeah. Color and um, and it was super simple. We just get the ESP32, which can add a little relay. And then the SP32 has a web socket with Alan bits. When it has, when there's a payment that then sends data to the SP32. So what pins turn on for how long? And then it just turns that little cheap cutio on, which then turns the, the lightning bolt on. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's really nice. I'm going to do it again. I think it was, it was a cheap material. It was probably about like 10 pound a head or something. And uh, everyone loved it. They thought it was cool. So, uh, and they all made them. So it was, yeah, it was great. It was, uh, but again, a great space to be able to just do like an ad hoc workshop, you know, one, one tiny other thing. Uh, so I, uh, I, I kept on saying Christian, I was like last year or the year before, I was like, I'm gonna write. I'm, I'm gonna write new tune for 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 blockchain days, and then last year I I worked too hard, and I was like I didn't get it. So now I, I've written one. I'm really proud of it. Hopefully I'm gonna I'm gonna try it in front of everyone. And then it's gonna be it's gonna be really soon. But it you comes every on the show. Yeah. Um, well, I can't yeah, do that right now. So right now, dude, dude, up, dude you know? I had a sneak peek, and it's like. Flipping it. Well, thank you. It's like, it comes to the state where it's like, I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm so, a so brand good. new crypto raptor wrap coming your way. Very cool. Uh, once again, thanks to everybody at the Orca Blockchain Days for having us and letting us have the room. Uh, sorry to everybody. We're unable to episode upload this episode live or have the Zoom thing with the graphics and all that stuff. Uh, basically, there's no internet. <laughs> uh, so uh, we managed to record the. Here. We hope we can upload this soon and that you guys can watch it when it comes out. Be sure to uh, give us a thumbs up down below. Thanks for commenting in the chat and leave us a comment below later on. Uh, until next time. Bye. 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 Bye.